nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. All right, so we'll get started in today's lecture. Uh, remember in the big picture, the big picture was that uh, we have collected some data and in the beginning we learned how to sort of throw away the outlier, how to plot them and so on and so forth. And then subsequently we understood how to compare a model uh, with the data and to see which model is good uh, and then compare two models and see which one uh, to sort of, at least statistically, which may apparently which would be better. But in the last few classes, we had been talking really about something else, which is how to reduce the number of experiments so that you can get valuable information without really uh, having to do a lot of work or whatever work you do uh, sort of gem creates the maximum amount of information. So one was the scaling approach, because if you do scaling of the variables, that reduces the number of experiments. And now we are talking about design of experiment, and today I'm going to talk about Taguchi uh, methods for ex doing experiments. And the whole idea, again, once again, is to reduce the number of experiments you have to do. And the other part of the presentation today would be, uh, or the lecture today would be on ANOVA method. That's also another way to reduce the number of experiments you have to do. I mean, it has many uses, but one of them is to reduce the number of experiments. So that's what uh, we are going to do today. Now today I didn't have a chance to uh, animate them. So therefore, please follow the laser pointer uh, uh, that I'll be showing and uh, so that uh, you can, you can follow, follow through. You may remember that uh, when we started uh, this discussion uh, last week, uh, then we had been th thinking about, let's say, two types of uh, uh, a land and a fertilizer. And there were four types of land, A, B, C, D, and four types of fertilizer. So you realize that number of factors is two, land and fertilizer, and the levels are four, because fertilizer from four different companies, let's say. So, in terms of the total number of experiments, if you wanted to do them all, then it will be 16. As you realize, all combinations uh, are there. And the number you see here, 1, 2, I just marked it as 1, 2, 3, 4. The reason I wanted to do this, I will call this a field view. Field view means that you lay down all your experiments uh, on, uh, on an arrangement as if you are doing it in a field. It may be a real field or it may be a... Uh, in, a, in a piece of paper or in your hand. What I have done in here in the run view, I have unfolded all this, this field view from 1 to 16, I have written them all. And if you look at the chem carefully, you will see that, for example, BB is 2. So BB is 2. So I have, I have all of them. And uh, what you will also see that um, the A, maybe we may be instead of calling it A, we can call it 1. Just renaming, that's it, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and so on and so forth. Because, you know, little d is 4, 4 for the fertilizer. Big D is 4 for the land. And so, therefore, you have, uh, you have the full run view table. And the interesting thing about the run view table is that if you look at it very carefully, and this is an important part, if you look at it carefully and actually plot the, all these factors, and I'm going to show you very quickly. For example, it started with 1, then uh, this is 1, then it went to 2, then it went to 3 and 4, and then it jumped down to 3 and 4 again, and all. So you get the idea. So this is the plot of this, this, this column, and similarly the rate is the call of plot of this column. And you can see that there are these two columns, but in some way, it, what is immediately obvious, just by construction, is that there are four fours. There are four threes, and so on and so forth. If you count, you will see each combination has been done once. Now, you'd say that, of course, because this is a full factorial experiment, so therefore, all layers should be equally distributed. That's not a problem. But my point here is that um, when we want to reduce the experiment, we will not want to do 16. That's too much. We will want to do fewer. 
But then we have to keep this property that first of all, this vector, this signal and that signal, when you multiply them together, the value should always be zero. So it should be orthogonal, number one. And second is that whatever number of threes and fours you have here, the same number of threes and fours you have to have here. So that's called balance. So it has to be orthogonal and it has to be balanced. It's sort of, you know, you will be doing fewer experiments, but we are trying to keep the essence of the full experiment alive. So just a graphical view of uh, uh, what, what this, uh, the, these things might look like. Uh, for example, in this particular case, let's say uh, we have uh, four experiments. This is an another one. This is not the land and uh, not, not the land and the fertilizer one, but the other experiment that I, I showed, uh, the, uh, giving you another example, where we had four factors, but the factors instead of each being going from uh, one, two, three, four, as in the previous case, it just has two levels, zero or one, right? They're just two levels. So in this case, again, the number of experiments would be, there are four of them. So factor is four, but level is two. So four square is 16. Once again, you have, you will have 16 experiments. 16 x, if you wanted to do them all, then you will have 16 experiments. And if you have done computers before or binary digits before, you may know, you may remember this table, right? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, right? We, we have often it write it in that, in that simple computer form. Now, of course, instead of 0, you could also have written 1. And instead of 1, you could have written 2. That's also fine. It's just a numbering. So essentially, you could correspondingly write. For this one, you could have also written that one. There's no, with no loss of information. But these four factors, in the beginning, you may remember, we assume that they are independent. That is to say that the contribution for A, these are like four friends, when they want to work together, they just sort of, their total output is a sum of individual outputs. It is not that when the two friends are together, they are so happy that their output becomes larger. That, that in this initial case, that's my assumption, that, um, that that's what's going to, that, that's going, going to happen. My question is, in this particular case, instead of 16, what is the fewest experiment can I do? that will still uh, be able to, able to give me the essence, assuming that there is no correlation. What is the minimum I can do? So the answer turns out to be that I have to look at a table, and that Taguchi table will give me the recipe about how to reduce the number of experiments, right? It's an algorithm about how to reduce the number of experiments that we can do. So let me, uh, let me uh, move on to that one. So first let me introduce you a something called a Taguchi table. Uh, it is a busy one because I didn't have time to animate it, but I will explain one the simple way and then you will easily understand it. I want to introduce in the Taguchi table now, but in the next slide I will explain how Taguchi table is used to reduce the number of experiments. So now, now this is just introduction. So Taguchi table is done in a run view. Remember we had three views, we had a field view, we had a run view, and we had a signal view. Oh, the signals were going up and down. So it's a run view. For example, this Taguchi table has four runs. It says that for this particular case, it wants to do four experiments. They want to do four experiments. Where the four came from, we'll think about in a second. And that's that four. Anytime you want to do four experiments, then that be that four. And wh what is this two all about? The two says, what is the number of levels? Up and down, switch up, switch down. So two levels. So that has to be in here. What is that three? Three says number of factors. For example, you had three factors, temperature, pressure, and volume. So you have three factors. And uh, they can be large volumes, uh, uh, small volume, large pressure, small pressure. So two levels, but three factors. And it says that you have to do the experiment in this order. 
that have all of them at a low value, then one of them at low value, two at high value, and so on and so forth. But you can immediately see that this has reduced the number of experiments because in principle you should have done eight experiments. Two to the power three, that should have been eight experiments, but you are doing four. And Taguchi already is telling you that in fact that four will give you almost comparable information as the eight if uh, the they are essentially independent of each other. Those factors are independent. Now you can see the advantage in here. This is, there are 11 factors. Remember the MOSFET example, I had doping, I had halo implant, I had oxide thickness, I had, let's say 11 of them. And you have two for it. Why two? Because you know, in the beginning when you're looking for the main factor that controls an experiment, you don't want to do five of each one of them. It is your choice. In the beginning, it's your choice. So you there, so the, you can see two to the power eleven would be a humongous number, right? And yet, what Taguchi says that all you have to do is twelve experiments, and then you'll be done. And this is the twelve. And this one says that um, uh, how the experiment should be run. Now the important thing in here is that let's say you're saying no, no, I have nine uh, uh, nine factors. Let's say I have nine factors, not 11. Now I have nine factors. Taguchi would say, you still have to go and use this table, but you have to choose the first nine columns. First nine. So between seven, so eight, nine, 10, 11, you use this table. When you go above 11, then you use some other table. And so these tables are all tabulated in the, in the, on the web. But more important, MATLAB knows about that all. You have to put one line, it will generate this table for you. So how does this number 12 come from? Well, the 12 number comes from this formula, which is called degree of freedom. Degree of freedom, that's the formula. So for example, let's take this example, and I have done it in here. I'm calculating the degree of freedom for this particular problem. That will tell me how many experiments I have to do. Out of the two to the power 11, how many do I have to do? So this one is, factor is, remember this F, in this case I have 11 factors, so that's 11. And then multiplied by, I have two levels, so two, minus one, that's minus one. And so when I multiply this, I get 12. So that is the why I have done 12 experiments, right? And similarly, you can check the other ones, let me not get into that one. Now let's say, actually you have 9, why should you still use 12? The reason is that if you had 9, then instead of 11, you would put 9 in here. And that will give you 10, but you still have to use 12. The reason is that it has to be a multiple of 2, or no, maybe uh, on that case, maybe uh, you, you can do 10, but you, in the, it's preferred that you do 12 in that case, and I will explain in a second. Uh, in the next slide, why you have to have sort of this, first of all, it has to be even number, and it has to be a multiple of this number, the L, in order for this to work. You get the idea, right? General idea, you got it? But note, notice something that is very interesting. Look at this column. This column has six ones and six twos. If you look at this one, yes, there is a lot of things going on, but you still have six ones and you have six twos. Yes, it is out of two to the power 11, much reduced set, but it is still had that property that each level is equally represented. You can go into any column, it is still six ones and six twos. Here, you will have, for example, four ones and four twos and correspondingly eight experiments, right? That's why I'm saying that it has to be multiple of twos. And, um, so they, and, and so on and so forth, and any rows you can go. So what's happening here? How did Taguchi choose this thing? Did he just uh, come up uh, from, from doing some magic and all? By the way, Fisher started doing this, but Taguchi formalized it. So it turns out that it is actually, uh, it's a very simple thing. 
If you look at these one, 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 let's say one is level, low level, right? That's one. I could have written L and two, I could write H. But let's say the value of the low level is minus one. Value, numerical value is minus one. So how should I, how should I represent this column? I have minus one, minus one. I have plus one, plus one. Because two is plus one, let's say. Numerical value is plus one. What about the second column? I have one, two, one, two. So I have minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one. Do you see that if you multiply these two things and sum them up, what should be the value? The value will be exactly equal to zero. Because for each combination, so that's why it's called orthogonal. The vectors are orthogonal. And then that will allow you to sort of choose the ones. It has to be orthogonal. Choose the ones that you want to keep in the reduced set. Out of 2 to the power 11, 12. The 12 have to be orthogonal. So for example, take this one. Or I, mean, I draw this one, for example. Four ones is this. And four twos are that. Then you have two ones, two twos, two ones, two twos, two, this, that, and that. And then you multiply, it will be zero. If you multiply second vector with the third vector, it will be always be zero. So these vectors are always orthogonal to each other. Orthogonal to each other. And that's the criteria to choose the reduced set of experiments. That combination will give you the most information. So it turns out that actually in your phone, if you're, especially if you're using a Qualcomm phone, underlying it is really based on this information theory or recording theory. Taguchi didn't know any of this. Or maybe he have known because it was sort of some time before. Because, you know, there are three ways to talk between two people. One is that you can speak louder if you're in a crowded room. So one way you can do is to speak louder so that your neighbors can listen. That is AM radio, amplitude modulation, speaking louder. Now, if you want to have a better fidelity, then what do you do? We do frequency modulation. What is frequency? So somebody is speaking in a low voice, somebody is like an opera and thing, right? And somebody is speaking at a, a very a high pitch. So that's FM modulation, frequency modulation. But of course, the best way to talk between in a crowded room, if you have a friend to speak, one person speaks Spanish, the other person speaks German, and the other person speaks Bengali, which is my language. And so that way, uh, it is even better. You can uh, speak to the opposite side of the room. Nobody else will understand, and only your friend will get it. So that's very efficient. That's why CDMA is so efficient. And the way CDMA is done is essentially, you see these four, and this four, you can essentially change it, uh, arrange, you see, question is how are these vectors chosen? One thing is you can just go to Google and or, uh, or um, MATLAB and print it out. That's fine. But the thing is, that's what most people do. But you have to understand it, right? We are engineers. So in order to understand it, what you realize that the vectors are chosen very specifically. For example, if you have this picture, you can see these blue sets will be zeros, uh, will be one, these will be two. Then the next one will be what? These, these two will be zero, and these two will be one, these two will be zero, these two will be one. And then you have zero, 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 uh, one, uh, uh, what did I do here? This is that, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the one, one. So you have one, one. Then I will have two, two. I have two, two. Two, two. I'm sorry. I should have drawn this box. What should I have drawn it? I should have drawn it blue. Because that's really, because that's the third row. Third row. I, uh, middle of the night, you know. Uh, and then these are the various basis functions. So these are called orthogonal codes. And orthogonal codes are what is most efficient in information transmission. Do you understand what's happening? What is happening that all these multiple factors are essentially cross-coupling, randomly doing it. But if you use these multiple vectors, it will pick up the effect of individual effects more cleanly. Right? That's why this is the minimum set of experiments you have to do.
So just a few more things, uh, just to, so if you have remembered the full factorial experiment, oh, I should, this should be a one here, I'm sorry. This is one and two. But uh, you get the idea that uh, if you now look at the full factorial, what you see that the only the ones that are orthogonal, they have been kept and Taguchi very cleverly has only kept the orthogonal ones and all the non-orthogonals have, one have been eliminated. So that now, even though now it is a reduced set, it still has the same number of ones. One, 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 four ones. I have four twos. So the, so the, this balancing property that I had here, it's equal number of one and two. That is true now in every column that is true by definition. Because you still have four ones. I have two ones here, two ones there. And you have two twos here. You have two twos there. So you still have the balancing property in place. Yes. So I understand that equal number is important. But, and, but the degrees of freedom, is that the minimum number to have equal number across all? Exactly. Columns? Exactly. Exactly. The minimum, the degree of freedom tells you exactly what is the minimum number of orthogonal vectors you can have. Right? Yeah. So, yes. So this is for if you have an equal weight for each for each factor that you're saying, like pressure, or whatever. But if you have, like, if you want to have one factor to be more studied, like an extra, so that's... Not yet, because remember, you, this is when you are first going in, you yeah. have no theory, okay. you don't know anything. The whole yeah, yeah, you are sort of, sort of trying to map out this humongous parameter space mm -hmm. with the fewest experiments. So this right. is how you start. Yeah. Once you have the experiment and you develop a theory yeah. and all, then you gradually. Okay. And you can see this is all assuming that these comes as a sum. So PV equals NRT will not work because P two factors are coming as a multiplier, right? So that's correlated. It is as if P plus V you are assuming. Now it will give you some results because although PV is a real physics, P plus V is also going in the right direction. But in that experiment, it will also show tell you that PV is correlated. So then it will immediately going to tell you you miss something in the experiment, uh, right? Yeah. So, all right. So for example, if you had, I remember I had four factors. So, uh, but as therefore, I will take uh, instead of this table, this Taguchi table is really relevant for uh, four, four to seven. I'm sorry. Yeah, four to seven. For four, why did I tell you that? Just give me a second. This table. This table says that starting from 4, 5, 6, and 7, use this table. 8, 9, 10, 11, use this table. So, so therefore, four, for 4, two-level system, I have to use this table. But I, and I need only 4, I don't have 7, so I cross it out. And the four experiments, I do it this way. I 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, and so on and so forth. But once again, you can see that if you take this one and then multiply with that one, it is still by definition orthogonal. So these are still orthogonal, although it's reduced set in terms of factors, reduced set in terms of number of experiments, but still completely orthogonal. Now let's say you did all those experiments and you realized that you remember how do you realize it based on the last lecture you will be measuring all the let's say you have these four factors and you have some result and you will be populating this table with all those results meaning that this could be the current uh, in response to doping uh, temperature oxide thickness and so forth you measured all this current and remember we will we'll populate them once we populate them you remember in the from the last class also that if you have a correlation then when you sum them, the coefficients will not disappear. The sum will not disappear if you have correlation. So let's say you see, if it disappears, everything, all the cross term disappears, you are happy. Your experiment is done, things are uncorrelated. But let us say that you found that there is correlation. So that means the original assumption you had is wrong. The assumption you had is wrong. And let's say there is an A-B interaction from the last analysis. So then, therefore, what will happen, what you have to do is a new thing. And let me explain to you. It takes two minutes to understand, but very easy. Previously, when I was doing it, my column one was A, 
column B was B, uh, column 2 was B, 3 and 4 C and D. I had four factors, so I put them in four columns. Now, of course, A may, may mean whatever, so it, this exact order is not important. But once you have decided it, you cannot change the names, right? I mean, our parents can give us whatever name they like, but once you have the name, please don't change it frequently, otherwise people will be confused. So now, uh, what happens is, let's, let's say there's interaction and the interaction between A and B. So in that case, you have to now do a very special thing. What you have to do is to write the first column name steel A, write the second column name steel B, but now because you know that there is an interaction, you put on the top of the third column not C, but a dummy column named A and B. I'll explain why in a minute. Then you write your C, then you write your D. What if there is a BC interaction? If there is a BC interaction, then you don't write the D. You write BC here and then put push your D in the next column. Right? So whenever you see an interaction, as soon as the individual factors that is leading to that interaction are taken care of, A and B in this example, put a dummy column to account for that interaction. Now, of course, this is a dummy column. There's no way to put A multiplied by B in the experiment. You can do low pressure, high pressure here, low, low temperature, high temperature here. You cannot put in a single experiment both low and high and everything together, right? So this is a dummy column. And uh, what does 2 mean in the context of AB? That means nothing. So it's a dummy column. Only thing this dummy column did was to push this column to the right so that you are doing a new set of experiments. And this new set of experiments, because previously, remember, you are doing this set of experiments. But now you're doing a new set, and that new set will decouple this interaction. That's what I want to tell you. So by the way, how many new variables we have? We have four real variables and one dummy variable. That's why it's five. If you have two interactions, then it will be six, whatever. You have this combination, of, you have 32. Uh, ln is not 32, 2 to the power 5 is 32, but the degree of freedom is 8, and that's why we have chosen that same R8 experiment, runtime experiment, and remember this is taken from here, so I have just written the first five columns, right, it's clear? Okay. So now see that previously when you assume that there is no interaction, the experiment you did Remember all the non-orthogonals one were thrown away versus the experiment that you do now where you have thrown away a column and thrown away these two columns. So you have one, two, four and five. Those columns are what you have put in here. If you do that, what you will find that because you have moved one column from here, something magical will happen. Previously, only element that had just one factor and nobody else, what was it? D. D was the one because everybody else has other, other friends present in the reduced experiment. I had A and C here. Others were present. But you see, now I know that AB is interacting. So I need, don't need to know D individually. I need to know either A or B individually, because if I know A and B individually, then I can get the AB factor. And if you do, do, do the, as soon as you push this dummy factor, you will find that now B appears alone. And when B appears alone, in that case, you will get that interaction. And then because you have AB, because you have individual effect of B, and then when you have AB effect together, you will be able to deconvolve the problem. So this is actually a very uh, powerful way. I will not go through a lot of details, but I'll ask you to think about it. For example, many times in the web design, people do this. Uh, let's say they want to test uh, uh, some sort of web design. So here, do you see that there are four, fa four factors? I have a font, color, background, and then I have background, font color background and foreground. So I have four factors. 
and I have five level of each. Do you know what, what those five levels are? This is yellow, green, and this and that. So I have five levels of each one of them. Different types of fonts, do you see that? If you had to do the experiments uh, properly, uh, you had to create 125 web pages and then ask somebody to check which one they like. Instead, how many do you have to do is actually, again, the Taguchi table, you have to do 25. You can again calculate how the 25 came along, and you have to combine them. One, 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 one would be this one. One, two, two, two would be this one, for example, right? And then you see some of them are four, some of them are five, because there are five levels. And then 25 experiments in a single box will tell you, and then you can ask whoever is your target audience. If it is all professors, professors will like which one? Let me see. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this one. They are very boring, so therefore they can take this one. Uh, I don't know what the younger crowd would, which one the younger crowd. You are the younger crowds. Which one do you like? So this way you can take a voting. And then in one little table, you can tell. So advertisement and all, right? Clear, more or less? You understood how to, yes, I, I will. Uh, so how to, my goal here is to how to reduce the total number of, give me one second and I will come back to this, total number of experiments. Taguchi, scaling, this and that, that's the, that's the ultimate goal. So let me uh, quickly summarize on this one. Design of experiment is a technique, uh, as I mentioned, widely used, widely used. Uh, every company, whether you have Intel or XYZ, anything that uh, does this, you have to have this. And so, but the important thing is, is that you have to do the experiment in sequence. First, you assume that there's no correlation, you get the correlation, then you do another time. And then if there is, a, you find new correlation, then you do another time. But still, it will be far, far fewer than the number of experiments that you will actually, actually have to do. Okay. There are two quick questions. I have a few more things uh, today, but uh, please go ahead. I didn't understand how you fill up the dummy column. You fill up, you first of all, this is a good question. Let me, let me explain it uh, carefully. First of all, I... Instead of taking four columns, this is run, four columns, I copy five columns in here without putting a heading on the, on the top, right? That's what I do because I have now five, four plus one, one. Then I go A, B. Then because I know A, B interaction is present, my dummy all immediately follows this two. Then I move on with C and D. If I have AC, I will put it in here and then push the D further up. Now, what I'm saying that AB is a dummy column. So the experiment you will actually do is whatever appears in the real columns. Those are the experiments you do. AB it has just shifted you. And in the next slide, I explained that why that shift was necessary. Because only by now this C is really the fourth column, this C. So what this one does is that it allows the one of the factors that is sort of having the coupling, then you sort of, it's like equation, Y, you know, Y is equal to, let's say, X1, X2. If you could have an equation Y, Y is, y is just X1, then the X1, X2 you can, uh, calculate, non-linear term you can calculate. So you need a term where uh, this is just alone so that you can get the couple effect. Is that right? Is it clear, more or less? Yeah. So it's not A into B, it's, it's just no, not B. No, no, it's not A and B. It's a way to sort of expand your equations in a way so that the factors that is having the uh, correlation effect becomes its own. This is like magic that it works at all, but this is how it is by construction. This is how it is. All right, very good. Now, can you quickly take a look? You don't have to answer them, but you can see what the questions are. What role did Fisher play in developing design of experiment? He's the father of. And in fact, people say uh, that he was such a 
important player statistics it is like before einstein after einstein statistics before fisher after fisher that is how important he is complete break uh, but the more important thing is also that people say he is one of the darwin's most important uh, 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 sort of follower follower in the sense darwin was sort of randomly walking around he put the mathematics behind natural selection so he is very very powerful you should read it there is a recent book on him also a popular book you can read that you should be able to choose these things right two levels so two three variables variables means factors 2 to the power 3 so we'll choose the smallest one that has four experiments we'll choose that one correlation amount full factorial method that was last class we have to take the cross correlation term linear graphs the picture that i showed where you sort of uh, uh, it helps you to name it helps you to name so you start with one then you put two and anytime you have a correlation that becomes your third fourth this is so, sort of allows you to name the columns now you may say that here is such a tiny problem this graph is not really very useful but if you have 10 12 and then you have multiple two correlation three correlations among the variables without a graph is sort of very difficult to keep track of where the column should be so you go first first column second column and then two columns and then three pieces and so on and so forth yes in this case do we have to run eight experiments or five is fine in this case, eight always, eight. always, because eight is what keeps it balanced. Otherwise, this experiment will not be orthogonal with that experiment. Because if you could choose five, remember, this is the level, uh, this is the experiment, and this is the for a given experiment, these are the settings. 